Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a simple team wiki in Tana. We're going to cover people and their roles. We're going to cover standard operating procedures, assets that you might have in your organization and guidelines that everyone has to follow. And of course, we're going to cover how to build nice dashboards that show you all of these things in a nice and clean way and make it easy to interact with all of these things. So let's jump right into Tana and I'm going to show you how to set things up for yourself. All right, so the first thing that we want to build is a list of people working in our organization. And I've gone ahead and as you see here, created most of the super tags that we will need already. Um, so we can kind of start with the dashboard building and we're going to pull in all of these things um, step by step. So let's build a little dashboard for people working at Acme Corp. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new search node and we're going to call this just team. Let's make it bold. And we're going to look for the team hashtag. And there's nothing to show here yet. Of course, um, we're going to indent team in the Acme Corp Wiki and then we can view as tabs here. And now we can build a nice little list of tabs for our different sections that we want to have in our wiki. So we want people here in our teams. So let me add a couple of people to our team. All right, so I have added Lucas, that's me, uh, Thea, Muhammad and Anastasia. And because we're in a live search and if I hit enter, that creates a new team member here. Very easy. The place where they get created is on the respective today node um, of the day you're adding them to that um, view. So let me add a final uh, person. And now we have the full team here. Now I can add this, of course, as a table. And now I have the role available and the email addresses. So I've gone ahead and um, added email addresses for people. This is a email address field. So that keeps everything nice and tidy. Now roles. I have the role field here set to an instance um, of the role super tag. And every role has a purpose and responsibilities. So let's set these up for the different people here. And so because this is an instance field, anything I enter, I will be prompted to tag it as a role immediately, which is of course very convenient. As you see here, tag as role. Um, and now head of IT is a role. All right, so we have a couple of people here now with their respective roles. And now I can define the purpose and responsibilities of each role, right? Um, purpose for head of IT. And then I can add responsibilities like, for example, right? So here, head of IT, purpose, responsibilities, deploy new hardware to new team members um, and that makes it really easy as I'm looking in my organization. Okay, who's doing what, right? This is um, quite easy. And I can, of course, add this for every person here in the team view. Now, of course, as every good business does, we have at Acme Corp a couple of standard operating procedures. So let us add a section for that inside our wiki and untitled tab becomes S O P S, and we're going to turn this tab into a search as well so that we can create SOPs all over the place. We have one central place though, where they fall together, where we can see everything at a glance. So what I do is I hit command K and then create search node. And now I can start uh, searching and I'm going to look for um, SOP 
over here. So now everything that is a SOP will get added. We don't have any SOPs yet though, so I'm going to do what we did before and I'm going to add these right now. All right, so I've added a couple of SOPs here. And if I expand these, you see that every SOP is maintained by a specific person. That's the person responsible for making sure that SOP is up to date and does what it is supposed to do. So these maintainers here are um, instances of the team. So set up new user accounts, that would be the IT job, send out invoice, um, that is um, Anastasia's job as head of finance. Sales proposal is Thea, right? She's head of sales. Then weekly stand up is Muhammad's thing, and running SWOT analysis is Ranjit's thing. Right, so now I know, okay, these SOPs are maintained by a specific person. And the cool thing is if I go to a person, I have here a list of everything that that person maintains, right? So I can have that at a glance as well um, on their profile page, if you will, what they are responsible for. Um, and that goes for SOPs, but as we'll see, that goes for assets and guidelines as well. So if we look into one of these SOPs, you see I've set here a couple of tasks that make up that standard operating procedure, right? For a new user account, I need to get the personal information of a new user, name, last name, whatever. Then I need to create their email address and I need to activate multi-factor authentication. And you see here, set up new user account is kind of in a more lighter gray next to it. And that is because in the SOP task super tag, I have checked build title from fields, as you can see here. And then the name is the actual create email address, activate MFA, right? And then in parentheses is sys owner. And that is the name, the title of the node that is the parent of that node, right? So here set up new user account is what is up here. Now, why is this useful? This is useful because I can go ahead and say, um, I can reference the SOP, set up new user account, right? And then what I do is I hit Command K and clone reference. And what this does here is it creates a set up new user account that I can now rename to set up account for James. Now what happens is that I have here set up account for James next to the task that needs to be accomplished, right? So that's really useful if I'm building for myself a task dashboard where all these SOP tasks assigned um, to me, for example, would show up um, and then I could show set up account for James and I could differentiate between the different instances of the same task that needs to be accomplished, right? That is um, super, super useful. And another quick thing you can do for SOP tasks um, is that you add here a done time, for example, and so if I check this off, I see immediately in the overview when this was completed. Now that's SOPs, we also have assets. So let's go through the same process again. This is now an asset and command K, um, search, create search node, and I'm going to look for asset. Now assets in this example could be your website or a social media account, for example, right? So if we have, um, acmecorp.com um, that might be maintained by the head of IT as well, right? And then we have here, you could record 
associated information, right? So I could, for example, create a new field just for this particular asset um, that says admin panel URL, right? And then I could put that link here so they have all the associated information that is necessary for this asset in one place. So as you see here, I've added a little bit of um, additional information for, for this asset. And then we might have a um, social media account and that um, is maintained by our head of uh, sales. And so Thea can then add information here, right? And again, if I go back to the team member page, you see I'm the maintainer of um, an SOP and an asset, right? I'm responsible for that asset and all associated information being um, available and up to date and people can come to me to ask um, whether things are as they should be or if they have questions um, and that sort of thing. Now of course you can um, add or you can group um, things in the assets um, section as well for example. We might also want to add a new field here to the assets in that we want to say assets, for example, can belong to a specific department, right? So that um, departments can make sure that they have everything they need in one place as well. So we can add a new department field and we set this to options. And now if we say, okay, the Acme Corp um, asset is the belongs to the IT department, um, we can also filter, for example, um, by department and say, okay, I only want to see all the assets for the IT department, for example, right? That's very powerful, especially in a wiki as multiple people um, work together and the volume of things in there grows, having that kind of information is super powerful. And as you can see in Tana, it's super easy to add that information kind of on the fly even as you come across use cases where it might be useful. And now finally, let's add guidelines. Create search node, and we're going to look for guideline. And here we might have a vacation policy, for example, right? And so here we have a maintainer, and this is um, Muhammad as the CEO, right? He sets the vacation policy and he can now write the text of the vacation policy in here. And that's all there is to it really, right? Like as you see, it is a very simple process. You want to um, set up a couple of fields like team, role, and then the things you want to have in your wiki. It doesn't matter where it is defined, right? Like no matter where you create a guideline or where you create an SOP, it doesn't matter because these dashboards in Tana all work through live searches. It becomes really easy um, to make them and to show them in, in a simple way and have everything in one place. And again, that also counts for the user accounts, right? Where you can embed these live searches to make sure that everyone knows, okay, Lucas is the maintainer of an SOP and of an asset. I can ask him questions. And for me, I just need to go here to my page and see, okay, I want to update this. Let me update this no matter where in the Tana workspace it lives. I hope this video was useful to you. I'll talk to you in the next video. You can also check out this video here on another um, pattern that you can use to run meetings, for example. Um, inside a team and you can also check out the course Mastering Tana Core link down below where I teach you how to build your own super tag systems from scratch and how to iterate on them over time. As I said, hope this was useful to you and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye bye.